Hello and welcome to video 13 of this series. Um, today uh, I want to do some corrections from some mistakes I have found and uh, then I want to have a look at the last layer of the extraction of the data, namely the parameter extraction. And uh, we'll do that in a quite simplified way. Well, and I don't know if we if I have to split in this video into two parts or if we can stay it in, if it can stay in one part. Let's have a look. Um, so first, fix some mistakes. While editing the videos, I found some uh, things in the code that I should correct now. The first thing, um, you remember we had this uh, gap check. And the thing here is, um, I also forgot to yield the meter here. So, um, this has to be done because we have to always generate the team meter frame. Um, even if you don't have the data, this would mean that it throws away the first frame all the time. Um, so this is not good. So fix this. Okay, second thing. Yes. So last time I told you uh, in the video also that uh, the standard allows explicitly that there is an idle frame here in between. The thing is, um, we don't do in the code, we check it at the first frame, but we don't check it in the between. So if we have a look, um, yeah, it extract packets conduit. Last time we did this get next frame, which waits and gets the next frame. And then we do the gap check. This is correct. This we should do with the, um, also with idle frames, but then we directly call the continuation and we don't check if the data actually is valid. So if the if this is an idle frame that doesn't contain any data that we can parse, so this, then the parser will probably fail. So we should do something about this. And uh, basically we need to, to, to get the FHP again. Uh, we have to get this frame. Uh, we, we did already get it here, so um, let's just copy that line. And then if the FHP equals the idle frame FHP, then in this case, we just loop over. Continuation and in the else case for the continuation with the extra frame. This should work now. Third thing, um, uh, already uh, talked about this in the in one of the previous videos. So we have this. We're running the chain, and this is the chain for the virtual channel, which runs in its own thread. So we have now the the source TPQ, the gap check, and then the we extract the packets and then we show them. Um, and this is run here. So uh, the thing is what happens on termination. Um, if we have, so we have two cases of termination. One is a regular termination. For example, when the parser fails, then we just return from the content, which means it shuts down the chain. And the second case would be some kind of exception, which is thrown somewhere. And um, uh, we don't care here for the exceptions. If an exception is thrown, it will be propagated through. All the threads will be terminated because we run them in, in asyncs um, for concurrently and in arrays. So if you remember, we started the chain, where did we chart it? Uh, not here. Run chains, yes. If this for concurrently, so if one thread gets an exception, then all others are terminated and then we raise them together with the entity rest chain. Uh, and which, which also means, so if an exception is propagated up, this should be um, terminated. But in the case we terminate normally, we should probably restart the chain manually. So we log a warning, something like um, um, we see And then having it also the VCID. Uh, and then we, we run ourselves again. 
also we need the the VCID as a word it, I think. Oh no, we pass it here as an int. So let's also make this an int. And uh, GHCID will now tell us what we have to update. We added the parameters, so of course, this will now compile. Uh, so basically, yes, here it is. We have then to pass in. So we map this onto. So we get this pair, a VCID and a Q. Uh, and we have to pass VCID here and into the chain the, the VC chain takes the VCID into Q, so the whole pair. So uh, we don't care for this. Let's just call it P and pass this P in here. Uh, pass error where? Ah, okay. Bracket. And yes, of course, then we are logging, so we need. And we need the health log func. Right, compiles. Okay. So, uh, errors fixed for today. Uh, let's have a look. Seven minutes in. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so the last step we did was extract the packet C, and with this we get a push packet metadata. So the push packet metadata is then some metadata, then the push packet, and the push packet itself has um, there's the header, the secondary header, the data, and the CRC. And now we want to have a look at the data inside. So how do we know which structure packet has? Basically, a packet is identified by a quintuple of values. We have the APID, the type, the subtype, and then we have a PI1 value and a PI2 value. For our purposes, we ignore the PI1 and PI2 value since we don't need them here. So for us, it's APID, type, and subtype. And <clears throat> these identify the packet, and then you can look up a structure. And the structure is basically normally configured via files. Um, in, at least in, in, in the European um, countries, we have um, our standards for the emission control system. So for SCOS 2000, it would be a MIP. This is um, ASCII tab separated files, uh, which I will show you shortly. And for, for EGSSC, for the new mission control system, it's uh, XML files with, with uh, more structured data. So let's have a quick look. Um, so open file, let's see. So this is an example MIP uh, for the for runtime tests. And you see there are quite a lot of files, the start files. And for us now, um, we look into the PLF, which is the packet location. And uh, so um, <clears throat> let's see the main table of form. And basically what this means is uh, the first column is the parameter name. So these parameters, this parameter is present in um, these packets. So these are packet. So um, as I said, the packets are identified by a quintuple of numbers, and then internally, at least in SCOS, it is done that um, this quintuple is mapped to a single 32-bit integer, so that you only have a one-part key and not a five-part key. And this is the spit, and this is um, basically the packet. So this parameter is present in, in these packets at this byte offset, uh, at this bit offset. So you can have underlined excesses uh, and then you have some flags and I think the last column is the default value and uh, so you see the, the parameters they can be parameters in different packets at different at same locations at different locations uh, whatever then there is a known file which describes uh, the parameter itself uh, its name its type how long it is uh, the, the bit width and so on and so, and so forth so um, we need to somehow have a definition of the packet, how it looks, and the definition of the parameters that are inside the packet of how it looks. And then we get the value of the from the push packet, the AP type subtype, 
perform a lookup, then we get the structure, and then we can decode the packet. So that's basically what we wanted to do today. Uh, let's see if, if we come this far. So um, first thing, um, so we have the push packet, and we have this packet definition, and what we want to have is a final result is a TM packet. <clears throat> and the, the TM packet is then already at the application level. So uh, in the TM packet, there should be what we need and what we want to see. So it is, this is then the application data, and this should not too much depend on the lower levels and the encoding and so on. So let's see. Let's define a file TM packet HS. Um, and we have a TM packet. Then we will need some kind of parameters, parameter value. Which describe um, the parameters inside the packet, um, and what we then finally want is some kind of um, function. Where we get the tm plus uh, no, meter. Um, and some some kind of packet index, some kind of lookup table or map, and then what we want to have is a TM packet. Okay. Um, and then we need some kind of packet structure. So let's also create a new file for this. Let's call it TM definitions. It's, uh, these are called packet definitions, parameter definitions, and so on. TM definitions. So what we have is then uh, this packet index. And uh, let's make this, uh, this packet index. And let's make this a hash map from some kind of packet key, which would be this AP type subtype, to a tm packet def. tm packet definition, tm packet definition. And then we need a, a parameter definition. So this tells how the parameter, what's the name, uh, what's its location in the packet, and what's its, its data type. And then we need some kind of value. And the value are the different possible values that we have. So from an, we can have a word it parameter, int parameter, double floats, um, time value strings, octet string, basically. We will focus on the very little subset of this for today. Um, there could be also a bit parameters. So we have, we have parameters of, for example, a 17-bit integer or one bit integer or something like that. Uh, we don't care for them as we then would have to implement the underlined access. So we will just focus on some basic values which are byte aligned and have byte sizes for now. Um, I don't know if we will do that later. Maybe currently we don't have a need for this. So to show the principle then to add this later is, should be, then be quite easy. Um, okay, so we need a packet key. And the AP is a word 16, and then we have a post type and a post subtype. Um, let's export this the packet index, the TM packet. Def parameter def and also the value. Okay, um, so let's add these files. Um, we have a tm definitions tm packet. And now, a 
let's follow the compilers. And there will be quite some, I think. Oh. Uh, so also let's export the TM packet here. This is then the application uh, application data structure which we will use then. Uh, okay, so uh, actually this convert should not belong here. This should be in the chain. Yes, we are still converting everything here. Uh, TM packet, okay, so yeah, we have to import import TM definitions save this, okay could not find model TM def oh. def Okay, type and subtype, and the thing is we defend the type and subtype inside the post packet, I think. Yes, they are here. Okay, so actually let's refactor that. So let's create another file. And I don't like to, to have them the post packet imported into the team packet it should be more independent. So let's export plus type. Uh, subtype and the parses. So in the, this file here, uh, types. and then of course in the post packet, as we've removed them from here, we need to import them here. Yeah, and then we don't have a parser. string and the team definitions we need to import the post types now right okay okay so in order this gets a little bit boring to type out so I've already prepared it so I'll just copy that now here so what I want to have is in is in a pit. Oh, we have some missing things. Yes. Let's also have that this packet has a name. And then we have the a pit type, the subtype, which we already have. So we need to import these post types. Um, then we have the source sequence count of the packet, which is important. The virtual channel ID from the frame it came off. Then a timestamp, and this is a UTC time. So let's import data clock, uh, data time clock. Um, why this is a maybe? Because uh, if you remember, if we have a look into the post packet, we have the secondary header. Where is it here? And this could be an empty header or this post standard header, and we have the time only available in the secondary header and in the empty header there is no time so if we um, if we want to have the time it could be that the packet doesn't have a timestamp yeah uh, then the earth reception time and the quality flag okay so the quality flag is actually 
part of NCTRS. So actually, let's also refactor that. And move this to the post types. Um, okay. We have some unsaved files. Let's save this and NCTRS, of course. So. Uh, Import post types. No instance for show parameter. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Deriving show and generic, and it's happy. So, so uh, yeah, the timestamp, the quality, and then we have a vector of the parameters themselves. So, how should the parameters look? I'll also cheat a little bit here in order to make it not too long. Um, let's say we have parameter has a name, a name, a validity, and a value. Um, so what is the validity? This is also a known data type. So we provided some implementation here. So we basically we say it's okay or out of bounds. You can also have other conditions. For example, if you have calculations with the parameters, then you could do some, some overflow checks or division by zero or something like that. For us, the out of bounds is if, if the definition of the parameter lies outside of the bounds of the actual data. So if we have to, the data is the byte string, if we have to index into the byte string and it's out of bounds, then this validity will be set. And there we have the value. So the value it can't find. The value is part of the definitions. So actually, we have to import the import definitions. And then we don't have a show value. Yes, that's right. Um, OK, very good. So basically, that's how the package should look like. Uh, let's change to the definitions. So we have already this this hash map, and then we have this packet key. And as we have to want to use this this key in the hash map, um, sorry, we have to provide a show, but also a hashable instance. No instance of generic. Yes, generic. And that's okay, and then we don't have a hashable for the pass type, for pass type and pass subtype. So let's go again there and add instances generic hashable. Generic hashable. Okay, very good. Um, the packet index is in this hash map. So let's let's have a look at the packet definition. So um, the packet definitions. So for the packet definitions, we have then the name, uh, the AP, the type, the subtype. Uh, basically, this is a duplication of the field in the header. But the thing is, um, it will become clear later. We have if we want to write this from a config file or load this from a config file, then it's better to also have it here. And a vector of these parameter definitions. All right, does this compile? Yes. So, um, okay, we also want to have a show, a generic, and a show generic for now. Show parameter def, yes, okay. Right. Okay, and then let's have a look at the parameter def. Oh, wow. And the parameter def is basically the parameter. How is the parameter def defined? So we have a name, then we have a position, which is the, the offset, where it is in the data field. And then we have a value, the value. Uh, 
why we have a value to for two things first to provide the default value if if we are for some reason needed and second um it provides already the data type so we know the width of the parameter so the next thing will be then the value um so and this is then the interesting part also so we define only very few parameter types for now so let's say we have a val u int 8 which is the word 8 u int 8 then possibly val u int 16 and then i want to have a val float which is then represented as a float and a val double a double and we then need a val octet which is a byte string okay um well that's it for now what we also want to have is then we have some kind of default definition which is a list of tm packet devs for now that's empty for now that's empty and uh, we need also a, an index so we want to have a list of team packet def and we want to convert this into a packet index so let's see um so basically we also start from an empty hash map so let's import this and we want to insert so, so basically we want to map over this list and then insert them so um let's make this with a fold L. Oops. Uh, so function f on the empty and then we call this on the devs. Okay, and this f f gets then with the left fold, so we get the hash map and then we get a definition. And so we need to generate the packet key is um from the definition, we take the tmp def apit def tmp def type and tmp def subtype. And then we call the insert. Uh, insert the key key the definition into the hash map no instance for eq packet key okay that's easy to fix and then okay we have this also for type and pass type Very good. Okay. Um, let's export this. Okay. Let's also. No. Oh, I want to have the default devs. Don't know if we will need them outside, but. Ah. Okay. Compiles. Okay, very good. So the thing is, um, we have then some default definitions, and we also want to be able to to write or read them from a file, config file or whatever. So uh, as we have already used ASIN for for the config, let's do this again. So in, uh, also in JSON format, data ASIN, 
and then let's also uh, from JSON to JSON uh, also we need here from JSON to JSON and here from JSON to JSON uh, yeah, then we have the problem with the value, so let's hide that. So we have JSON has a type called value, ASIN has a type called value, and we have also a type called value. So, and then, ah, uh, yeah. And this is one of the nasty things. Um, it's understandable. So, if you see the instance, no instance for two JSON byte string. Because JSON is a text format and byte string is a binary format, so you cannot reliably transmit the byte string. Um, so we need to get round of this somehow. Uh, so one thing we could do is uh, base64 encoding for something, but in able to be able to specify them in the config file, I just want to go um, with uh, hex dump, hex code. Yeah, so that you can uh, more easily enter than than sixty four um, base sixty four values. So let's actually change this to a type hex bytes, and we don't have this type. So let's let's go here. And let's define a new type hex bytes, which is actually a byte string uh, no we will write the instances by hand most probably um, let's see we want to have some kind of uh, we want to have the, the from JSON to JSON instances and for this we need to convert this into a text form and back so um, to convert it into a text form should be quite easy so we will use a, a builder x bytes Builder, which takes the hex bytes and converts it into a builder. And we use the package text builder for this. Most of the time I use this. Uh, we need to add the package, of course. Um, I use it mostly for text formatting, for very simple text formatting. That's, uh, that's cool. Okay. So. Uh, no, we were in types here, so okay. Um, restart. X bytes builder. X bytes B. Ah, uh, no test builder text. Sorry. We hide the, the builder from from Rio, and we also have to import the post types here. Ah, oh, no, we have them, but we haven't exported the hex bytes type. So let's export this. Yes, and then we don't have to instances so we have to write them by hand so let's first do this builder so what do we want to do we want to um so let's have a look at the builder a text builder so basically what we want is we could want to convert if every byte of the byte string with this unsigned hexadecimal into builder and the thing is then you get the number depending on what the content and what we also want is that this is always on byte values, so we have to use the where is it? The path from left function, which says uh, if the builder is smaller than this width, we specify here fill it with this character. So basically, we um, we take this byte string, we unpack this byte string, which gives us a list of word aids. And then we 
we map uh, over this list a function which is uh, unsigned hexadecimal. And yeah, we need a byte string. Okay, and then we have a list of builders, then we also need to add from left. Uh, so we want to pad this byte with two and the character zero. And so we get this the value and we pass this value to this builder. And we have mismatch braces, yes. Okay, and then we have a build and then we Right, so this compiles. Good. The next thing is we need to be also able to, to do the reverse direction. So we need a parser. Parser X bytes. So we need to, to read two hex digits and pack them together into a byte get the list of these bytes and then pack this and then we have a byte string, right? So this should be in theory. So um, let's start with a byte. So the, the output of, the, of this parser, now let's also do this, make this undefined. So um, at the parsec. And we do this, I think. So we need specific, yes. So we need specific things. We have to satisfy function. And then we can use the is hex digit, I think. Let's have a look at uh, data jar. There should be some function like is is hex digit, right? Okay, very good. So, um, so let's take a value a um, satisfy is hex digit, and then we need to get the second value, and then we need to calculate them together. So. Uh, we have the so we get a character so we need the, the number of the character so we need this the ORT function from data char to convert a then shift it left for four bits and ORT it with ORT b so uh, as this is a hex digit, we get a number from 0 to 15. So um, 0 to f hex will be 0 to 15. And this one, and then we can shift them in the byte and then construct the word 8. So this should basically be... So the, the, the parentheses are, are important. Parse byte, yes. Or yes, uh, of course we need to import data char. And data bits for the bit manipulation. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, and we need data auto parse, like not byte string, but text. Uh, any word it? Oh. Ah, we need both. Uh, 
template string and we need also import qualified data up to parsec text and this is an to parse the text. We don't operate on byte strings, we operate on text here. And uh, pure. Ah, we need the from integral. Of course, so. Um, or it returns an int, but we need a word 8, so this is the problem. Uh, still not? Okay. What's wrong from integral and then text with byte string? So this is an AT parser. Yes, okay. Now we're talking. Okay, so we have a parser and we have a builder. <clears throat> uh, so now we parse one byte. So uh, then we have to do a parser which generates, um, we have many parse byte many so this is zero or more and what we get is a list of word of parse byte values which is a word eight so we get a little list of word eight so we call this b pack to pack this into a byte string parse byte and then we have to uh Yes, this is an also this is an, an text parser, and then we have to wrap this into a hex bytes into the hex bytes constructor. Right. Okay. Now we can have a look at the from JSON and to JSON instances. So um, let's start with the to JSON. I think this is easier. Instance two. JSON X bytes well. So for for this we need class to JSON. We have these two to JSON and to encoding. Okay, so you, you, you then get this the type in and then you have to create a JSON object or with two encoding and create pairs. Basically we will have to provide probably both instances. So let's have a look. Two JSON hex bytes. So what we want to have is actually all we want to do is to to get a text value and the text value are where are the values? value just want the string okay so actually um we call the hex bytes build mm, hex bytes builder on this b we call run from from text byte string so uh text builder so if you have um the final thing is then this run function which converts the builder into a text value so um, before it's just so this is for 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 the as I already talked about in another video. If you have a lot of conc concatenations for text, which we have now, uh, builder concatenation is very cheap, and then in the end, this run function allocates one memory for the text and then copies everything in. You don't have you don't have to do multiple copies. So uh, with this run function, now we have a text, and then we just wrap this in a string constructor and of course we have then to we forgot this data is um, uh, yeah. once again so we have a two JSON instance with this one thing but we also need this two encoding b and this is then a uh, uh, always the wrong one. String, the text. Yes, text function. We have to call text 
on a text. So we have the same here. And then we have to call text function from uh, encoding. Yeah, so not the internal one, but this one. Data is an encoding. Let's import this. Encoding, and then we just use the. Okay, right. That did something. Um, it also says we have no show instance for hex bytes. Okay, so let's also quickly do this. Instance show hex bytes where show. Uh, actually, we, we run the hex bytes builder, so we get the text. And then we simply unpack the text into a string. And of course, we don't have again. Okay. So we need. Okay, let's let's continue with the X bytes. Then we need the from JSON instance, of course. Instance. From JSON hex bytes, well, and from instance has this parse JSON, I think it's called. From JSON, parse JSON, yes, and then we parse in the value. A value and we want not an object we want just pass the text yep okay so parse json text uh, string was it string x uh, okay uh, so we have to this is not a text value so we have to parse this um, with how to pass a text Parse only the hex bytes parser on hex, and then we get the left error, and we just fail Python, or we get the right value, and we just return it uh, or pure. Okay, um, and the thing is we have a partial match here, so for everything other, let's put out an error and ah, there was this error handling somewhere, type conversions, encoding, decoding. Yeah, something like this. Prepend. This is exactly. Yeah, this is good. Prepend failure parsing exploits failed. Uh, e type mismatch. Uh, we have a string invalid. What is invalid? Ah, this one. Ah, okay. Yes. So we just give it a name. Mismatch. Type mismatch is from. No, not um, type mismatch. Data is in types. Import data is on types.
Okay, data is in parser. Oops. Uh, okay, yeah, this is an auto parsec parser. Auto parsec parser is A. So. Right. No. Oh, 33. Okay. Jumping again didn't work. So. And then we need also to choose from subtype and type. Okay. So. From JSON to JSON and also for the subtype. Compiles. I'm surprised, but could. Very good. Okay, so then let's just do one other thing for now and then we close the video. Um, let's write this. Actually, we do the same like in, in config. Just copy this. Write config, read config. And let's call this write. TM definitions and this is then a list of TM packet devs, devs, encode pretty devs, write file, okay, yeah, and read TM definitions from file path. And read file. Blah, 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 could not open file, reason, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's either the code. And this is a... Deepak. <clears throat> BL, okay, yeah. Not qualified your uh, string DC and yes. Okay. Oh, and anchor pretty. We don't have this is data is pretty. I think we did already do this in config. Let's see. yeah. So let's. See. For this, and it compiles. So and then write and read them definitions. Also, let's export them. Let's quickly check if this build, and then we conclude for for this for this video. Compiles. Very good. Okay, so let's conclude for this video. Um, so basically it was now about packet definitions, um, how the data structure looks, and then we can load and uh, load them from file or store them to a file. So uh, we will do the same as we did for the config. So we create some default definitions and we write them to file, then we see the format. And um, Next time we will also then perform the lookup and do the, the packet conversion. So thanks a lot for watching.